All right, joining me now is a new WSOF Waltweight fighter. Please welcome Paul Bradley to the program for the very first time. Paul, how's it going? Good, man. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Appreciate you taking the time. Now, let's get right into this news. Uh, just the other day, it was announced that you have signed a deal with with a World Series of Fighting. Um, up until now, you were a Bellator MMA fighter. How did this deal with WSOF come together? You know, it was one of those things where uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I was coming off that big win against Honeycutt, you know, and... and uh, you know, I'd been told for a while I was getting a new contract. You know, that was the last time of my contract with Bellator. And it kind of kept dragging their feet, man. Um, you know, they told me uh, they agreed to the contract in April. And then, you know, they said they'd get it to us in uh, June. Nothing there. And then finally, you know, I just kept uh, I kept hounding Rich Chow, who's the vice president for him. And I got, he called me and uh, basically told me, like, you know, there there's too many uh, – too many fighters, not enough events, and I was actually on a potential list to not be re-signed. So I was like, you know what, man, like, if, if this is how it's going to be, I'm going to go ahead and test the free agency because, you know, uh, I, I was ranked fifth at the weight class. You know, I was on a on a win streak. You know, I had three very good wins with Amasu, Nier, and Honeycutt with my last one. So I... Uh, I went out and, you know, just checked around and uh, talked, to, talked to World Series of Fighting. They seemed very interested and very, very happy to, you know, talk to me about possibly going with them. And it just honestly made sense. So instead of just waiting for, you know, an answer from Bellator about possibly not even being re-signed, I decided to be proactive, get out there and go find someone, uh, someone who uh, wanted to see the value in me, so... Yeah, I can't blame you. That's kind of bizarre that Bellator wouldn't want to re-sign you, you coming off the wins and whatnot. An impressive uh, win over Honeycutt, as you said there. Uh, were you given any reasoning as to why you were on that potential list of guys no, they, they weren't interested in? Because I can understand if you would be cut or not re-signed, say, if you're on a three-fight losing streak, but you're, you've been winning yeah. fights, so I don't really understand that. You know, I think a big thing about it was, uh, you know, they tried to, they kind of tried to make it seem like uh, they were doing me like a favor. You know, I need to fight three times a year is what they told me. And they're not, you know, they're not able to do that. But I think, I think when we get down to the reality of things, I think I just, let's be honest. I, you know, I took a big crap on their party with the golden boy, you know, that, that was their, that was their guy. That was supposed to be the next big thing. And, and uh, after he beat me, uh, you know, what I was hearing was, you know, he's either going to get, you know, the number one contender fighter or a title shot with an impressive win. So, uh, let's, uh, you know, everything I'd heard through the grapevine was, you know, they just weren't real happy with me winning that fight. So, uh, you know, I don't think that helped. But uh, at the same time, like I said, you know, like, I mean, I went out there and did my job. So, here I'm getting punished for it. But <laughs> it's like one of those things, man. I was – I it's crazy, you know. It really doesn't you make go sense. Out there and you, yeah, you go out there and you put on a, on the show that people want to see, you know, and, uh, like, you know, I even talked about that. I, it, had I lost the Honeycutt yet, yeah, of course, I, you know, they, they would have caught me, but it just put them in a, a really weird situation because, you know, they were planning on trying to use me and my name as credibility for him to get the next next big fight or the title shot, you know, so... Now, you don't think Bellator was too happy with you because you beat Honeycutt and whatnot, but on the flip side of things, were you happy with Bellator up until this new deal with WSOF? Uh, honestly, no, not at all. Um, they, they did some pretty – they did some things, and I kept my mouth shut. I, I did, like – I wasn't in a – I wasn't a uh, – um, you know, I – it wasn't like uh, the former champ at 55. Or why am I drawing a blank right now? But, Will Brooks. Uh, yeah, I wasn't outspoken against how you know how I was be, being treated. But a lot of people don't know that I was act actually supposed to fight Chris on December 4th um, because you know obviously I'm supposed to have three fights a year. Um, but instead, that was supposed to be in San Jose. But instead, they they went ahead. I, I had already started training camp. I had already flown to Illinois to start training camp with. With with a with a buddy of mine and their wrestling team out there at University of Illinois, and 
so my flight was bought. I was out there training, and, you know, unfortunately my manager, Jason House, gave me a call saying they were going to reschedule it to January 20, 29th. So uh, essentially my contract was just shredded with no, no sense of getting reimbursed for any of uh, the expenses I acquired when I was out there or my plane ticket. So you know what? I kept my mouth shut there, and although I was pissed and, you know, had to, had to do the whole Christmas thing with, not having any any money and all that, I still I still kept my mouth shut and went out there and performed on January 29th, and it's just one of those things where I wasn't even getting any respect. So it, it was just better off I got the heck out before before it got any worse or or I didn't even get resigned, you know. So I suppose things uh, lined up relatively nicely. No, it's not like you you want to jump ship all the time, but. It's not like you, you, you no. weren't happy with Bellator, and now you have a new contract, you have a new home, so things are looking good. Yep. Yeah, you know, and the, the, I took a lot of things into, into you know, into mind when, when I started talking with World Series. So, you know, the way I looked at it, even if I'd gotten the contract with Bellator, I was always going to be on walking on eggshells, I felt like, you know, and that next fight, you know, it could always be my last one, and and, you know, let's say, you know, had I lost my next fight with them, had they re-signed me, they probably would have cut me. And there goes my market value and all that. And, you know, you don't ever want to think about that type of stuff because we're always going, you know, you go out there to win, but you never know. So I I just felt, you know, being on the win streak and having some pretty pretty solid wins in Bellator, being ranked top five, and uh, I just felt like it was time to time to find someone who – who actually appreciated me and valued me, man. So it, it wasn't a hard decision at me for uh, wasn't a hard decision at all after I talked with Ray Seppel on the phone. And you know, I, I don't know many presidents that will call up a potential client and talk to them for 45 minutes. That's for sure. So that that sold me, and it just it was the right move. So did you approach WSOF or did they know you were a free agent at the time and, and did they contact you initially? How did that conversation kind of unfold? All right. So yeah, it's kind of a funny conversation because, you know, after I talked with Rich, it was one of those things where I'm like, well, man, I, I don't want to be waiting on their decision. I want to be proactive. So I just went out and like I said, I tested free agency. I, I talked to, Talked to uh, some other people. I emailed Joe Silva, you know, uh, 1SC and uh, World Series of Fighting, of course. And I actually uh, got in touch with them through Twitter. Um, I follow them. They follow me. So uh, the guy who runs our social media passed it over to Ray, who, who said he was very interested. So we just went about it that way and got the ball rolling. And sure enough, within a week or so, we were in discussion. So. Okay, interesting. Were there in any of the other organizations that you reach out to? Were any other organizations interested? Yeah, you know, uh, Joe Silva surprisingly got right back to me, and you know, he did his research on me. He's like, "Well, you've only fought, you know, five times in the last three years, and you need to, you know, you need to get a longer win streak and and get a little more active." And I was just kind of like, "Well, you know, it's one of those things where." I don't want to. I didn't want to go back to fighting on the regional shows. Let's put it that way. Uh, I don't think I deserve that at that this point with with some of the big wins I've had. And you know, it's not my fault. You know, not really my fault that I've only fought five times in the last three years with Bellator. You know, so it was one of those things where, like, did I really want to go back to fighting in the casino shows for eight hundred bucks? Well, no. You know, so it just made more sense. To, you know, after after having that big win and and uh, ha- having that big win and like approaching a company company like World Series of Fighting who who needs depth at my weight, honestly. So it just made complete sense to 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 go that route instead of like I said, I I felt like it would have been taking a step back had I had I gone down to the smaller shows and you know fighting in front of you know maybe a thousand people and not getting paid what I was worth. Right, fair enough. Can't blame you uh, there, absolutely. Um, no one would want to 
uh, go back to the regional circuit, especially as a guy, a, a named guy like yourself. So um, let's talk quickly about GF's uh, former WSOF matchmaker, Ali Abdelaziz. Um, he, he's really controversial at the, right now. There's a lot of controversy surrounding him and his past. If he was still with WSOF, do you think your view on the organization would be different at all? Uh, you know, I, I kind of had something going on with him when I first moved to San Diego three years ago. I actually signed a contract with them, um, you know, and the, I, I, Ollie, he couldn't give me a day. He, he, he couldn't tell me when I was ever going to fight. So I ended up taking a fight in a regional show down in Florida and lost a very controversial split decision. And, uh, essentially lost my job for it. But, uh, yeah, I I don't know that I would go that route with him still being in there. Not, like, I don't really know the guy, but like I said, like, we signed a contract with him, and the guy just couldn't give me any answers to what when I was going to fight, you know. And at that point, I, I needed the money, and I needed to fight. So I went down into Florida, and like I said, I lost a very controversial decision to Valdo Origio. Um so, yeah, that, that's the only interaction I've had with Ollie. But, you know, after talking with Ray, you know, he uh, he brought he brought that up, you know, that Ollie was, you know, he's matchmaking and managing fighters at the same time. And it just wasn't in their best interest to have a guy like that in that position, you know, because, you know, even if you don't want to think that you're favoriting your fighters, there's always going to be that in the back of your mind, like, oh, I got to get my guy in here soon, you know, but. Yeah, I think it could have been a lot different if he was still in there. But like I said, I, I don't know enough about the situation to really dig deep, deep down in there to really know what's going on. So, sounds like negotiations this time around with World Series were quite a lot smoother than they were back back a few years ago when you were first talking with them and talking with Abdel Aziz. Yeah, uh, way smoother. Like I said, they. Uh, the, the CEO of the company actually reached out to me and told me, you know, welcome to the family. And like I said, uh, when Ray called me, that, that that just basically sealed the deal. I was like, man, this guy's awesome. Like, I, you know, how many, like I said, how many presidents are going to just actually call a potential, you know, employee and sit there and talk to him? And he understood all my concerns I had with Bellator and, and, and you know, just, kind of how I was being treated, you know, and I don't want to sound like a disgruntled employee, but some of the stuff I just, it was, it was kind of obvious that, you know, not that I, yeah, like basically they didn't want me or they were upset with, with me winning or something. So it was a super, super weird situation with, with Bellator towards the end. Cause like I said, they, they had agreed to a contract. We, we were all set. I was told I would fight in August and then, Lo and behold, I talked to Rich Chow, and I'm possibly on a list not to be resigned. So that pretty much, uh, you know, was the icing on the cake to get out there and, and, and see what was out there for me. Now, does it sound like things will be quite a bit different in the World Series in the sense that you will kind of get your way when it comes to amount of times you want to fight and whatnot? Now, I know, like you, you said a few times earlier on, uh, the, the key uh, number of fights for you per year is, is three um, now, I'm not saying you can call for a title shot, call for thousands and, and millions of dollars and, and get that, but does yep. it look like matchmaking-wise, it, it'll kind of be uh, going your way when it comes to number of, number of fights and whatnot? Yeah, we, you know, thankfully, they, uh, you know, we, I definitely brought that up to Ray and expressed that I wanted to be active, you know, like I said, uh, two fights a year wasn't really cutting it, and, uh, they uh, they put right in the contract, you know, that I'll definitely be getting those three fights a year. They put a six month clause in there, which is nice. And uh, you know, they they, uh, they sound like they're they're behind me, they're backing me. And you know, from all the social media posts, they've been reposting and posting and all that stuff. Uh, it's awesome. I I haven't gotten this kind of support with with Bellator. I mean, heck, you know, I didn't even get my. <laughs> they didn't even. Uh, they didn't, you know, they usually all companies do the birthday thing for, for the fighters. And I didn't even get one of those. So <laughs> when that happened, I was kind of like, man, they, they must really like not, not that, yeah, they must not like me or, 
like there must be something going on and sure enough like i said that i was possibly on a list of not being resigned and i'm not the only one i've i've talked with a few other other fighters uh you know i don't want to bring them bring their name up but it like i said rich, rich was saying to me uh I'll, you know, I'll be very surprised when I see more names on that list that are coming up that won't be resigned. Which, you know, I have one guy in my head in particular, and I'm just like, wow, really? Like the guy's on a two-fight win streak with two nasty knockouts. So, I'm not the only one, but like I said, I, I'm not really sure what direction Bellator's heading in. I think they're more, they're more focused on building the stars they want to build. You know, the MVPs and the Honeycuts and the Josh Thompsons and instead, you know, and all the other guys, you know, who are still winning are going to be on that list. So, Yeah, it's definitely a bizarre situation over in Bellator, but uh, let, let's keep the conversation flowing with WSOF. That's really that all that matters yep. at this point. Um, do you have any, ad- yep. any idea where you will fit into their rankings? Like, have they told you how far you are from a title shop, things like that? Well, you know, it, it Seems, it sounds like it could be within one or two fights is how it sounded with Ray. Uh, like I said, they, they, you know, they got guys like Yushin Okami and they got Jake Shields and John Fitch and uh, they just signed John Howard. So I think I rank right up there towards the top. So I'm, I'm hoping with an impressive win my first fight, maybe have one more. But, you know, it sounds like it could be as soon as, soon as my second fight, possibly fight for a title. And, you know, I've, at this point in my career, that that's the goal is to win a world title. And, you know, there's only four organizations I think that world titles really count. And it's UFC, World Series of Fighting, Bellator, and 1FC. So, you know, um, I wanted to win the, the title in Bellator. I expressed that after my last fight. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get that shot. So um, coming over World Series, that, that that's the goal. First and foremost is go out there, win my first fight, do it impressively, and hopefully get a title shot after that or do one more fight maybe and get that title shot. So Awesome. Now, uh, that's definitely good to hear that the title is going to be coming sooner rather than later. Now, let's talk about your debut. Uh, have you been told any names you could be fighting next? When When are you hoping to uh, to walk into the, into the WSOF cage uh, for the first time? I imagine sooner rather than later, but realistically, how soon do you think we can see you back in the cage? Well, I, it sounds like possibly November for me. So, um, unfortunately, you know, the, their July show is obviously already booked, and I signed, you know, mid-July. So, I think they have one in uh, September and October, and those are already booked. And But it sounds like November for me. And, and uh, Ray told me straight up, you know, he's like, you know, you, you're going to be a guy who is going to be on, you know, you're going to be on a televised spot. So, can't really afford to put me on the undercard of any of these other fights. So sounds like November, which which is real real good. You know, it's kind of far away, but I understand the reasoning behind it. He just told me to stay ready in case something else falls out, and he'll try to get me in sooner. But it sounds like November. That's great. Now, uh, how many fights do you have on your current contract with WSW? Uh, currently, I have four. So I've got a four fight contract, and and uh, yeah, so. Pretty pretty happy with uh, with uh, the offer they made me and uh, yeah, like I said, I I feel like I, I found a, a great great spot for me to showcase my skills and and a new home for me. Yeah, do you see an do do you see an extended future with WS? So if you have the four fight contract as you just said there, um, that will probably last you to sometime early 2018, I would imagine. Especially if your three mm-hmm. fights per year uh, kind of holds up, barring any injuries and whatnot. Um, do, do you think WSOF can be your your home for? For the majority of the rest of your career, do you think you'll go elsewhere after the four uh, four fights, or do you think that really depends on how you're treated and and how the four fights go during that time? Yeah, I mean the the way that I've, I've been treated already, I, I feel like this is definitely my home. Uh, I'm happy to fight for a company that that's backing me, and uh, yeah, I, only time will tell, but. It, like I said, for for now, I feel like this is the right decision. This is the right place for me, and uh, get the fight on TV so I can keep all my sponsorships and all that good stuff. And 
uh, NBC is a, a you know a huge huge company NBC Sports. So yeah, I'm definitely happy. And like I said, Ray, Rarity tell me I was, I'm a televised fighter is is good news, very good news. So yeah, as far as uh, as far as the future goes, I'm, I can't look that far ahead, but. Right now, this, this is the right spot for me, and this is where I'm happy. Sounds good. All right, Paul, appreciate you taking the time today. Before I let you go, just let my audience know where they can find you on social media, and if there's anyone you'd like to thank or give a shout-out to, now's your time. Yeah, you know, uh, Paul Bradley 184 is my Instagram, Twitter, and uh, my Facebook is Paul Bradley 170 Definitely got to thank the sponsors who have always been behind, behind me, Skyler Orthopedics, uh, Orthopedic Prompt Care, Dr. Giabati, you know, surgeon that sponsored me and took care of me for the past two years. Uh, good friend, uh, John Lazard at WTC Wide Format. Uh, Hayabusa, man, awesome company. Uh, love those guys over there. Definitely helped me out. Sticky, sticky no more. Uh, great guys, man, taking care of me. Awesome company. Um, and then, of course, uh, yeah, that's that's about it. So, and of course, my gym alliance always uh, always being there, helping me uh, get ready for these big fights and uh, backing me.